Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Elliott and I'm a student recruitment officer here at the American Institute of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. Welcome to the first of our monthly AUS talks where we'll be discussing a range of topics with students, faculty members, guest speakers and others. We wanted to introduce one of our lovely students here, Joseph, uh, who I'll be asking a few questions, a bit about his background, why he studied the major he chose and other things. Hello, Joseph. How are you doing? Hello, Mikhail. How are you good, doing? Good, I'm good. I'm, I'm doing very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, to speak with me here. Me. I know you're quite busy um, okay. with studies and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I just have a few questions that I wanted to run you through. Be yourself and answer them. Um, so, first and foremost, just tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so, uh, as you know, I'm, my name is Joseph Zwayn. I come from Lebanon. And I came here to the to U.S. a year ago, a year ago now. And, I, and I'm majoring in, uh, I'm doing my AB, MBAs in healthcare administration. Healthcare administration. Yeah. So you've told me a bit about your background. Um, can you uh, tell the audience a bit oh, more? Of course. Well, I did my BBAs in Lebanon. Uh, I, had, I had two years of experience in different fields of, the, of management, from stock management to store management. But the, 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 the past three years, I moved to disaster management. And I was working at a fire station for uh, since 2021. I pulled back from administration, from business administration itself, and I'm aiming to go into disaster management. So that's what brought me here. And personally, I thought that healthcare administration is will bring me one step closer to my target. And uh, and I was lucky to find it in Switzerland actually. Okay, nice one. And why did you choose AUS? I mean, you obviously had a lot of other choices. Actually, no. Uh, that. There, are, there aren't many universities that does double made, double degrees, especially mm -hmm. with U.S. universities like Tiffin, like mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. And this particular special, specialization, I couldn't find it anywhere else, actually. Mm -hmm. I was able to find it in French, which is a bit useless for me, because I, I'm, I'm better in, uh, in English, so that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I looked up, I, I, I looked you up, guys, and I talked to Fuad, your colleague, mm -hmm. and he gave me a lot of information that were really crucial, mm -hmm. and then I... I did some research around Tiffin and around the US, and then I made my final decision. Got you. And now that you're here, what do you think, just generally speaking, what do you think about AUS? Well, for our market it as it is, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a very diverse campus. I'm Lebanese. I, I, I've met people from literally across the world. Mm -hmm. You have from the American continent, from Asia, from Africa, from everywhere in the world, actually. So uh, I met amazing people. Mm -hmm. I built very, very good friendships. And I also uh, met nice uh, admin uh, oh. officers. Thank and uh, yeah, that makes AUL actually special. Yeah, um, and also one of the things that we emphasize at AUS is the fact that we provide a practical education. Yes. I mean, given the fact that you have had some work experience across a range of sectors, can you tell me how that benefits you given the fact that you have some professional experience? Well, actually, that's the first thing I brought. I bring up when people ask me about the U.S. Mm -hmm. because when I did my BBA in Lebanon, it mm -hmm. was theoretical. So mm -hmm. they give you a book, they tell you just memorize it as everybody does and mm -hmm. just go do your test. Mm -hmm. But here at the U.S. it was actually very different because mm -hmm. everything we were doing is practical. Mm -hmm. So teachers don't come, don't come and just throw theory at us. Mm -hmm. They put us through challenges. They make us do a lot of projects against each other actually mm -hmm. and work on systems that actually give us the real life experience that we need mm -hmm. to go into the market because we all know that uh, the work market is very saturated and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to get into it mm -hmm. and theory, theory alone won't get you there so experience like this practical experience like mm -hmm. the one that you ask gives nice actually one. moves you a bit nice one can you tell me about your favorite project or your favorite simulation that you've done recently uh, well, of course well, uh, during my first uh, term, I, I had a class related to building laws and everything related to real estate in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So the final test was actually the, the professor divided the class into groups of two and gave us a budget to work on. And we had to maneuver to, through the laws and regulation of the Swiss government mm -hmm. in order to build the complex, sell it or either rent it. And mm -hmm. the group that makes less uh, law mistakes, mm -hmm. such, such as regulations, mm -hmm. And, and able to uh, do the project as rentable as it can be is the team that's gonna get the highest grade actually. Mm -hmm. So we weren't ranked on how good we did the project, we were, we were ranked on how better we did than, uh, than other teammates. Nice. So that really boosts the, the whole thing. Nice, that's quite cool. I mean, for me, I went to 
uh, university, a typical theoretical university. And I kind of envy you because you get that hands-on experience and pretty much it's less likely for you to be bored. So that is quite cool. Um, do you want to add something? Uh, I, I don't think you can get bored at the US mm -hmm. class, really. Good. It's because really it's interactive. It's, mm -hmm. it's pushes you through limits you never knew you had. Nice. That, that's, that's quite cool. Yeah. And I guess you get the chance to really develop a range of skills. So not just Useful in skills. the business environment. So you get the hard skills, yeah. you get the soft skills with the intercultural uh, yeah. interactions with others, right? The skills you actually need. Mm -hmm. Because as I told you back when I, do, when I was doing my BBA, the skills that they were teaching us between brackets, it was all theory. Mm -hmm. But the skills were useless because yeah. now we have everything digitalized and we have AI that can do most of the things we thought, mm -hmm. we were thought. Mm -hmm. But now we... we we were, we, were, we were taught to manipulate AI, you know? Mm -hmm. That's one of the stuff we worked nice. on, like blockchains and all of those. So we can actually know how to get into the market, mm -hmm. the work market, mm -hmm. and really have skills that are needed, not yeah. skills that are outdated. Very nice, because now you can go on, you, there's, a, there's a range of resources online where you yeah. can actually learn um, and get knowledge, but getting the hands-on experience is quite important. I wanted to move on to Switzerland. Um, so obviously you're an international student, you're coming from Lebanon. What do you, what do you think about Switzerland? It was a, it was a cultural shock actually, yeah. because you're moving from a country with zero laws, <laughs> zero like regulation. People do what they want yeah, to do actually, yeah, yeah. to a country where uh, you cannot walk outside of the line. Mm -hmm. And I saw the difference at first, I was a bit shocked, mm -hmm. but then I realized that it's, that's what makes life good at, mm -hmm. in Switzerland, especially because with all those regulation and taxes and, you know, everything that might you, you might pay if you go out of the line mm -hmm. people are just walking on the line and look around you mm -hmm. it's, it's cool. yeah it's, it's the beautiful system is working I mean, actually yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty nice and orderly yeah um there's this perception that switzerland is boring what do you what do you think about that what do you uh, no it's it depends what you like to do for mm -hmm. example if you like to go party every night you cannot do this here mm -hmm. I, actually <laughs> but if you're a person that likes to go on, on, on hikes, to see the nature. Mm -hmm. Even if you like to party, I'm not saying you can't. You can go to big centers like mm -hmm. Lausanne or Vevey, you can have this experience. Mm -hmm. But Switzerland, if you come here, you just have to live with nature, actually. It's mm -hmm. one of the things that makes it particular. So is it boring? It depends on your personality. It depends. Right? Yes. I mean, there are opportunities to do other things, yeah. but as you said. Yeah. You can go party, there's yeah. a lot of bars you can go to. Nobody yeah. says no to that, but uh -huh. it still depends on personal preferences. Yeah, very nice. Um, and so for incoming students, new students, or people who are moving to Switzerland, uh, what are some of the tips you can offer them? Given uh, the fact that you experienced that culture shock that you just mentioned. Of course. So everybody has this perceived image that you go to Switzerland and bam, you see you, you're a millionaire, you get money, mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you're just, uh, yeah, you're living the dream. Well, nothing comes like this. You mm -hmm. actually have to work hard mm -hmm. on everything you earn. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get there. I'm not saying it's impossible, mm -hmm. but you have to be a bit realistic. You mm -hmm. have to know that there's a curve. You have to know that to go to get where you want to be mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen in a day or a night it's mm -hmm. not the country that will make it happen it's yeah. you mm -hmm. so i just the advice i can give them is be realistic mm -hmm. know that uh, marketing has made an image of uh, switzerland that it is actually but not in the way they think it is mm -hmm. so they have to be realistic they have to know that they have to work hard and grind and mm -hmm. they'll get there actually because it's 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 a country that will give them more opportunities than any other actually and you, th and you think the opportunities actually do exist yeah. where you just have yeah. to put the work in yeah. and be Realistic. Opportunities are all yeah. around you. You just uh -huh. have to, yeah, work hard, mm -hmm. and you have to grind. Actually, you have to show the, show them that you want to be, to, to be a good citizen. You want to be working in big companies. You want to have good salaries. You have to show that. You have to have the skills. You have to be present. Actually, mm -hmm. not only dream. Very nice. Yeah. And what do you think about the region? I mean, you, you obviously, based on what I know about you, you're a big fan of nature. Yeah. You see, we're sitting here at the lakeside yeah. and the mountains. It is quite beautiful. But generally speaking, what do you think about the La Tour de Pay slash Swiss oh, Riviera uh, region? La Tour de Pay is a very nice and calm and rich neighborhood, actually. So you know, but people don't really don't mm -hmm. actually know how it's divided. So Vevey is very close. It's the center, but La Tour de Pay is like the rich neighborhood of Vevey. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it's very calm. Mm -hmm. like, uh, that makes it that's that's good for students that they want to actually study outside you can sit here and study all day long nobody would bother you mm -hmm. so the region here is amazing and it's, uh, i guess it's a good a good place for a for a university to be studied mm -hmm. and do you are you happy with your choice of coming here in la tour de pay compared to say geneva zurich because a lot of people outside of switzerland they know geneva they know yeah, zurich those are, those are very big cities you mm -hmm. know 
people prefer to go into crowded places, I tend not to. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to go places where it's calm, it's mm -hmm. accessible, it's not very crowded. For example, try to take the train to, to Lausanne in the morning. But mm -hmm. You're gonna stand up all day, all morning long to mm -hmm. get there. But here, when you take the train, it's it's not empty, but you have place. It's like it's less crowded, and it's better for me. Actually, I don't mm -hmm. know about the rest, but it's, uh, I prefer it rather than going to Zurich or Geneva or Lausanne. Very nice. Uh, so, what do you do in your free time? Oh, so uh, in my free time, as I told you, mm -hmm. I like to hike a lot and uh, look at the mountains around you. You have a lot of possibilities, a lot, a lot of hiking trail. Even the Swiss government did a mobility app where you can find all the hiking trails you want, summer or winter. Mm -hmm. You can actually cross the lake in a boat and go to France. Mm -hmm. It's accessible. I just uh, travel a lot to France, mm -hmm. ma mainly, mm -hmm. because uh, it's very close. And Italy too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a train ride. So yeah, during my free time, uh, other than studying, <laughs> I just uh, go discover nature and go around because it's really accessible. Okay, very, very nice. So what, what's next for you, Joseph? So when do you graduate, first and foremost? Uh, and what are your plans after graduating? Okay, so normally I graduate at the end of this year, mm -hmm. hopefully. Uh, I'm getting married soon, so that's going to change a bit my plans and my vision to where, mm -hmm. to where, where I wanted to go and where I'll be now. Mm -hmm. So for the time being, I'm staying in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try, as I said before, I'm working hard on finding a good job and establishing, establishing myself in a company. I'm not saying I want to stay here forever. I just want to get a good experience mm -hmm. because I know the experience that I get here will make me go to a higher level and a higher management level in any other country in the world mm -hmm. because you have the you have access to the not top notch experience mm -hmm. and switzerland is kind of known for that so switzerland in my head before i got here was associated with quality high quality of life those sorts of things is that your experience so far but as i said uh, <laughs> It was a shock because of so many regulations and so many taxes, but that leads to a very high quality of life, actually. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to France or Italy, you don't find this quality of life. Mm -hmm. Here, you're at peace. You're actually at peace. Mm -hmm. You don't really think about other stuff. When I was in Lebanon, I used to always think about security issues and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But here, you don't have that. You don't even have to think about that. Yeah. So, it, uh, life Free, is easy. It life. frees your mind a bit once you get yeah. used to the lifestyle and those sorts of things. Yeah, you, you adapt quickly, actually. It's yeah. not very... Uh, yeah, how long? About how, what would you say? How, about how long? I mean, you mentioned the culture shock to begin with. How yeah. long would you say it took you to acclimate? Well, it, it, to adapt, it took me like, let's be realistic, a month and a half. Mm -hmm. But after a month and a half, I was really in there. I mm -hmm. was like, I know how they think, I know how they react, I know how they move forward. Mm -hmm. And I learned to live like they do because mm -hmm. uh, they, I guess they are doing it right for their country. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and you speak a bit of French, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah? was fr uh, I was in a French school in Lebanon, so I was okay, French you. in the age from the age of three to eight, to eighteen. So yeah. Okay, got you, got you. So you you spoke French before you arrived here. So when yep. you got here, that kind of no, it, wasn't the it, it helped with the transition. Yeah. But I guess if you if you don't speak French, how would you kind of navigate? Well, so you have like fifty more than fifty percent of the population is not even Swiss. Mm -hmm. So mainly everybody speaks second language mm -hmm. most probably english mm -hmm. so i don't think that would be a problem to communicate with people actually okay got you and there are resources for people to learn yeah, french yeah and... the, the the school the, the, the university is giving french courses i guess okay yeah, got you I, I read it on the... so yeah joseph i just wanted to thank you is there anything else you wanted to add for well, the audience no no that's that's all i want to say just very nice. uh, it might be you you might think that it's a very expensive country to come to mm -hmm. but just keep in mind that the network you have here the access you're, you're gonna have an access to a very good network that will push you further actually so very nice. that's worth it very nice yeah. well thank you joseph thank it you was lovely you. speaking with you yeah. um and i wanted to thank you guys for tuning in to the first edition of aus talks and i hope to see you uh, soon mm -hmm.